God is awesome. Amen. We spoke this morning. Former day was from Luke 10. We said, Jesus appointed the 72 and they sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. You are appointed by God. Why? Because God has an agenda. Amen. And he decided that you are part of his agenda. And may it be so that after this morning you said, God, I'm here for your agenda. If I understand it or not, I will surrender to your agenda for my life. Amen. We said to be appointed, first of all, we know that God has an agenda with us. Secondly, we said, God, anybody who were here this morning? Second point, attention. God has an agenda, and his attention is on you. He's focusing on you because he decided that you are part of the agenda. Otherwise, he will not appoint you if you are not part of the agenda. And that's what he has for your life. Hello? And thirdly, number three was, appear. I need to appear before the king. I need to appear before the master. So that number four, I will be accountable to him. But if I don't understand how to appear before the Lord, if I don't understand how to be and live from a place of knowing Jesus Christ, my accountability will always be in performance. If the people will watch me, yes, I will do the right thing. I will know well how to do the right thing when they expect it of me. But I don't have the capacity in me just to do the right thing. No. If I understand God's presence in my life, if I understand and respect the fact that God appointed me, everybody say, God appointed me. And if you respect the fact that God appointed you for a specific purpose, then it's first of all, not what do I like doing and what is... What is, what is giving me energy and what is giving me to do his will, that's your food. To do his will, that's your food. That's the energy in the Son of God. To do the will of the Father, that was the energy, that was the food. That's the substance of his life, to do the will of the Father. Are you with me? I pray that for you, I pray that for me, that next year, especially more and more, it will be to do the will of my Father, that is my food. That is the feast, to do the will of the Father. Not, I need to understand everything of the will of the Father. Not, there's certain things that can give you energy, but you can align your life in such a way, the way you determine what will give you energy. Hello? The one that is trapped in negativity. That negativity gives him energy. He won't believe it, but it's true. Certain rubbish that you can be addicted to, and because that thing gives you energy, it gives you some other kick at that moment. But you stand for what in your life? To have, what's twists and angles? To argue, hmm? an argument, to, to argue about stuff. It, it can give you an energy. If you are very serious about certain stuff in the politics, serious about the conspiracy theory, serious about this or that, it, you can, when you start to speak about it, it's just like it's just flowing more and more and more. And the more you speak, the more excited you can get about it. You had that in your life, that you had certain things that you can talk about, and the more you speak about it, the more excited you get. Is the, anybody experienced that? 
Now, so it's supposed to be with God's word. You say, Holy Spirit, work it in me. From now on, next year, for my future, the more I get into your word, the more I hear your word, the more I can worship with your word, the more I excited I'm supposed to get. I want that dynamic in me. I want that dynamic to work in my life. Amen. But then I need God's wisdom so that I understand how the Word of God must connect with the Spirit of God to work in me. So that the Word of God is the testimony from the Holy Spirit in my spirit. Is it not so? Romans 8, Holy Spirit testify in my spirit. What? The Word. The Word. So the dynamic between the Word, the Holy Spirit, and your spirit is so intensely, intensely crucial, my brother, my sister. It is so intensely crucial. But there will be the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and your spirit. And God says, worship me in spirit and truth. That's the kind of worshipers the Father is looking for. That will worship Him in spirit and in truth. But my spirit Holy Spirit testify about the Word of God in my spirit. Or, not my spirit, but my soul. Not the Word of God, but some other other word. And not the Holy Spirit, but some other demonic spirit. Who's this now? Some other demonic spirit, with some other rubbish that I believe, testify in my soul. Or in my soul, if there's the issue. Or in my soul, there's the negativity. Or in my soul, there's the temptation. In my soul, it's still about me. In my soul, there's that thought that I entertain. You see those three? Those thoughts in my soul? It's my soul. Well, those rubbish and that demonic spirit, those three connect. No, 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 no. Don't try and fight it. It's not going to work. You start with the Word of God, your spirit, Holy Spirit. Everybody say, the Word of God, my spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, let's try. Holy Spirit, testify about the Word of God in my spirit. Or some other demonic spirit will testify, bring testimony against you in your soul about how bad you are or about the, how this will not work how that will not work how you tried to pray and it didn't work how you tried to go by faith and these things didn't work out so it does not work and you have the testimony and your soul and that demonic rubbish agree but we don't know but your soul or your spirit is going to agree with some other spirit so they will be the testimony in your soul. And they will be the testimony in your spirit. You decide. But if you want to follow God and worship Him as a lifestyle, worship Him from your spirit. From your spirit. You can agree with a lot of guys in the world out there. Yes, we can listen to those music. That music that's some, it's very nice. I'm not saying you're not allowed to. But I'm just saying, make sure that you are practicing in your life how your spirit must testify with the word because your spirit cannot testify necessarily with all those stuff out there are you with me you're listening to this program you're listening to that you're listening to that garbage in garbage out hey are you with me so somewhere you need to be busy with god And so that your spirit will be strengthened. So that your spirit will mature. Amen? Let it be so. We are appointed. And you will understand your appointment tomorrow. If I am appointed, it means certain times I must be at certain places. If you are the gardener, you have certain appointments that you must just meet. If you are a dentist, there are certain appointments that you have where you're supposed to be. If you're a medical doctor, there are certain appointments that you need to be, where you need to be. When you're a, the headmaster of a school, there are certain appointments where you just need to be. 
Hello. You stand, uh, understand appointments. You understand priorities with your appointments. If you understand what you are appointed for to do in life. But for the guy out there in the world, it's just obvious. He uses his brain cells and he, he, he know. You know? If you're working there at Checkers, 7 o'clock, you will be there. Then you'll do that. Then you'll do that. Then you'll do that. Then you'll do that. You don't do it. means you don't want the job. Okay. Go or be fired. Are you with me? So for the guy out there, he understands it. But why, when we walk with Christ, we don't understand it? No, that not anymore. In the future, we will understand. In Jesus' name. Amen. So to hear, for you to hear from God, God, show me my appointments. Some he will tell you, some he will not tell you. You know? <laughs> and in the heavenly, some of those appointments. There's an appointment, 9 o'clock, to learn patience. There's an appointment, 10 o'clock, to step out by faith. There's an appointment, half past 11, to apply wisdom from above. There's an appointment... Quarter to 12, to give through Father's strategy to two people around you. There's an appointment, 10 minutes past 12, to pray for two people and to phone them and to encourage them. There's an appointment, 1 o'clock, just to enjoy yourself with your friends and have a feast. There's an appointment, 2 o'clock, hello? And in the heavenlies, that could be really the appointment. There's an appointment, 2 o'clock, where you will do that thing that you will do it as if unto the Lord. There's an appointment, 2 o'clock, where you could take the temptation not to do it for the Lord and call in frustration to overrule the joy of the Lord. To call in frustration to overrule the peace that's beyond all understanding. To call in the frustration to overrule the love that can be the driving force where I can be driven by love. Or I can take that appointment as this is the, an appointment to deal with the frustration in my life that so easily, so easily, so easily, this frustration takes me into a place where love is not the driving force, peace is not guiding me. Hello? And joy. His joy over my life is not strength anymore. But at quarter past three, tomorrow you have such an appointment to deal with that frustration that is always bullying, bullying you and you. he's walking over you every time. And for some reason, your character changed. No, your character doesn't change. You just surrender to what is happening in your soul. You have the character of Christ in your spirit. You have the character of Christ in your spirit. Scriptures here, you have the mind of Christ. You do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in your spirit. You have it. Hello, for your spirit is perfect. But you can make that choice. You have an appointment. Okay, guys, I'm here. I know the dog is nice, but still. Hallelujah. You have an appointment now. Sorry. Not with the dog. <laughs> okay, where are we now? If you understand who appointed you, you will rock up for the appointments. If you understand who appointed you, you will be there. If the boss, if the boss of checkers appointed you, you will be there for the specific appointments of what is expected of you. And you will come with a certain expectation, not true? Based on your appointment. So my brother, my sister, may God open it up for you in this season that you will just Get back to God and say, God, show me. You appointed me for what? For what reason? Why? And the first thing, like we said, because God has an agenda. Let's say God has an agenda with me. I will give him my attention. For he is focusing on me. Is he me? If I now think I want something to be done. Now I'm looking at one of you. Okay. Um, okay. Ruth. 
I have an agenda, I'm thirsty, and this is finished. He's gone. No, I have an agenda, and I want to appoint Ruth. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wonderful. She must have first pray about it, if it was me. You, know. you must first pray. You know. and are you with me? And we can make this. Thank you. If you can bring me some more. But this can be a process. This can be a process of, of an hour or two, or a day or two, or three. With God. And God just wants you to do something simple. There's just something simple that God wants you to do. There's just somebody hungry and you must just give him something. Hello? Or you must just remember, thank you very much. Give her a hand. If it, if it can happen like this in our lives, oh man, life can be so much more simple. Whether we can hear God, understand what he wants us to do, Go and do it, and that's it. But now we must get so spiritual about it, you know. May God help you. May God help me, in Jesus' name. I said, let me my... So you're appointed by God. You are part of his agenda. And to accomplish his will, you are there. His attention is on you. I focused in on Ruth, because... I believe she will have the capacity to be able to bring me water. Hallelujah. Awesome. Is that true? So God looks at you and he believes you have the capacity to do exactly what he wants you to do. For his sake. For his glory. For his satisfaction. For his fulfillment. For his kingdom. Just because he wants that to happen. You with me? It is your food. Let's say, it's my food to do his will. What is that? It's one of the basic foundations for your appointment by God. Yes, we are called to worship him. Yes, we are called to love him. Yes, we are called to walk in his ways. Yes, we are called to be driven by his love. Yes, we are called in all of that. But one of the foundations, I'm here on earth. To do his will. And my food is to do his will. And accomplish the work that he has called me to do. On earth. Amen. So please go and get practical with God. Please go and spend some time with God and get practical. You know. Because if you don't sit with the boss about your job description at checkers. And you don't hear, I must be there. I must go there. Seven o'clock at that door and enter there, and then I must speak to Tani, Tani, Tani Knotsi. And then I must do this, and I must speak to about this, and where I must do, and then I must go and stand there. And I must have, so have certain clothes on, you won't believe it. And then this is the way that I will behave. But when it's with God, we must, we must first really pray about this. You know, about every, 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 every step. And if I got hurt by work, you know, working can be very dangerous, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and now, if I give myself so full out, I'm going to be somebody's slave, you know. I'm nobody's slave. Hello? Who on earth is speaking there? Is it God? Or is it some other chocha? Ach, may God help us that we will know. I'm appointed... Because God has an agenda with me. But the enemy comes. You are appointed to do my will. You are appointed because I, the devil, I have an agenda for you. You will destroy others. You will bring depression. You will bring negativity. You will bring strife. You will bring stress. You will bring fear. You will bring doubt. You will, you will take hearts away from one another. You will bring disrespect. You will bring judgment and to criticize everything. You will bring the facts of right and wrong, and they will be wrong, and you will be right. I have an agenda for you. I have an agenda, and you need to give attention to me because I'm giving attention to you, hell is saying to you. Counterfeit, it must be there. You cannot be creative. You cannot bring out something, something new. Only God can. But he can only give you the counterfeit. 10 rent. 
So that is true. Unto you is assigned. It's appointed unto you. There's a scripture that says, it's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. It's appointed unto you that you will die and then go to heaven or go to hell. It is appointed unto man that that is the course of mankind, the scripture says. So that is the, that is, that's going to happen if you like it or not. But from that place of, it's appointed to me that one day I'll die and I'll go and burn in hell forever or I'll go to heaven. That's going to happen if I like it or not. But what can change now? I can rock up for the appointment that I have with God. Or I can rock up for the appointment that I have with the demonic agenda from hell. But the eyes from the enemy is on you. And the eyes from heaven is on you. The one to destroy you, the one to let you blossom. And now for that destiny, it's appointed unto you to say, I respect the appointment given by God. But when you feel depressed or when you feel negative, you rock up for the appointment of the one that will tell you who you are. You are messing up. You are doing this. You are doing that. Rocking up for the appointment with this frustration. I'm appointed by frustration to say the following. And then you say stuff that you never thought you would say. I'm appointed by fed upness. I'm appointed by whatever, offense, by hurt. And I'm appointed by that whatever spirit to do what? To say the following and to have my heart not where God wants it to be, but in that place. To have my heart close towards you because you did that. And too many times, we say, God have mercy on us, on, on the church, between churches, between people, leaders, in the family, in the physical, in the spiritual family. Oh man, there is not going to be time for this type of thing anymore. This is cleaning up time. Clean up, clean, clean out the house. Let's get all these petty things over and done with so that the fight is not in here anymore. Because when everything is shaken, there cannot be this shaking here. When everything is shaken, the stability that is from here must come down. The stability from here must come into next year. Must come into your relationships. Must come into your dreams. Must come into the calling. Must come into the agenda that God has with you. So when you rock, rock up for the appointment, heaven will come down. Heaven will come down when you open your mouth, when you say, when you speak. I desire that life. I'm not there and I'm saying, God help me. May God help you also. That we will desire such a life. Amen. Where God says, for everybody, that he, there is where there's a shaking in their life. I can trust that son of mine. That daughter of mine. I can trust her. I can send these guys that are in total turmoil. I can send them to him. And he will show them the stability. Are you with me? Sometimes people will fight with you because there's something in their lives. There's some stuff in their lives that they need to deal with. And God sent them there, but they don't know why they're there. But by God's grace, by God's grace, by God's grace, he led them to you. And when they come to you, they blah at you. And if you can see beyond the blah, <laughs> what's God's agenda? God, why is this person here? You direct my footsteps. And this scripture says he appointed them to go where he wanted to go. Where he was about to go, there he sent them. Is you me? Where he was about to go. Now, the only uh, example I want to give tonight about that, where he was about to go, walking on the water, walking past them while they're coming with a the boat, 
He's still praying here. At the right time, he's just going to move over the storm. Boom. Walking past them. Because he was about to go to the place where that man with all the devils, where he was, but he was a strong man, and something had to happen in the spirit world so that a man can be raised up and to go and change five cities. But for that to happen, a lot of demons had to go into a lot of pigs. Hello? He sent them ahead. He sent them ahead. He appointed them and sent them ahead to go. He sent them into the storm. To go what? Through the storm. Because he has an agenda. So there he has an agenda with you and he is not troubled by the storm that you will go through. Because the storm is where you're supposed to just go through. Your purpose is not to deal with the storms in your, of your life. Your purpose is not to deal with the storms, what's happening out there in the nation and in the nations of the world. Storms will go. Storms will come. Hello? But will you have the capacity to go through it into what God has for you? He has an agenda with your life. Doesn't matter if storm come doesn't matter if storm is there or not. You can fulfill his agenda for your life because God said, if God said go to the other side, that settles it. The storm says, we're going to die. The storm says, it's the end. God said, we will go to the other side because he has a purpose. He has an agenda with a man there on the other side. So my brother, my sister, whatever storm you're going to face, hopefully you will not see the ghost in the storm. That was who they, how they saw Jesus when he came. When he spoke, he said, no, 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 don't fear. It's me. It's me. But if you are so focused on the storm, even Jesus can look like a ghost to you. That you could fear his presence and don't understand what to do with his presence in the midst of the storm. Are you with me? But please, in the midst of whatever you're going to th go through. Before next year, you will know what is the agenda. I'm going to the other side. This is the prophecies over my life. This is what I believe God has said to me. This is belief. I believe what I must do. And come what may, I will do this for God. I will do it with God. I will do it in dependence on Him. I will, in whatever happens on the way, what is going wrong, I will forgive myself. I will forgive others. I will forgive the people close to me, the people far from me. I will forgive because through the blood I will accomplish. I will make mistakes, but praise God for the blood. Praise God for the word of the cross. I can boast in the cross. What does that mean? I boast in the cross because it means I can succeed in spite of my weaknesses. I can succeed in spite of my mistakes. I can succeed. That's why I boast in one, and that is the cross. If I can understand how to run through the blood of Christ to the throne of grace, I will find the favor. I will find the enablement. That is called grace. Grace is enablement. I will find the enablement that will enable me to fulfill my destiny. To fulfill my destiny, what God has for me next year. It is your food to do His will. Let's say God will provide for me. For what? To do His will. Only for one reason, to do His will. He will provide for you in what you need physically, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in the people around you, in the prayers from a granny, from a this one, from a that one, that you ask them to pray for you. Go and phone five people and say, will you pray for me next year? Even if you just pray five times next year, write it in your diary. And you pray that next year I will have a hunger for the word a hunger for Christ. I will not think about myself. I will live for Him and I want to do everything for Him. 
and phone five people over this in this time. Can you give me a very good Christmas present? Please. I want to ask you something. Will you please help me with something? Yeah, sure. Many of them will say. Sure. Can you pray these five things for me? Ten times next year. Or once a month. Can you just put it out there? Or can I send it to you once a month? And before you delete it, just read the prayer by faith in Jesus' name and pray it over my life. Why can we not do that? Why can we not do that? Well, we're supposed to. Scripture says, carry one another's burdens. That is not just, you must come and carry my burden, JP. No. That is, I must open up my burden. I'm supposed to open up unless there's too much pride in me. But if there's a commandment to carry one another's burdens, it's a commandment to open up your burden. To be carried. No, it's me and the Lord. That's rubbish. That is super spiritual. Because God said, you must carry one another's burdens. Now he says, cast your burdens unto Jesus. How does it work? At the end of the day, through people that are bringing it, you're bringing it. When you've done it unto him, when you've done it unto him, you've done it unto him. <laughs> Are you with me? If you say it works like that, then it will work like that. It's never just, I love the Lord, but I hate my brother. That's fake like we said just now, first session. That's fake love. That's fake Christianity. Hello? God, I want to, I want to serve you, but there's nobody around you that you serve. So that's serving of God. That's rubbish. I will serve you, not the people. That's attitude. Yes, you must do everything as if unto the Lord. That means you must serve the people better. That's why when they were slaves, all the slaves, I mean, here's your life. You were bought for $500. Okay, Meralda. For $500. Titan 5. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus come and he sets you free and what does he tell you be a good slave <laughs> can you believe it <laughs> it doesn't set you free <laughs> not to be a slave all the slaves him the apostles everybody say be now very good slaves can you believe it that is what for Peter and those guys you came, Jesus, to set us free from this Roman Empire. You came to set us free so that we will not be slaves anymore. Anybody from anybody. No, you didn't. To set us free from slavery in our minds, slavery in our hearts. So that's why he said, slaves, serve your masters. But those who do it in the Lord as if unto the Lord. So your testimony as a slave must be so excellent that even when your masters are ugly with you, they are bad, they are doing the things wrong, then especially then, Paul encourages the church, especially then, slaves, do it with excellence. Do it with excellence as if unto the Lord.